Welcome to this rebroadcast of an interview with Chris Shea, founder of Life's Journey Life Coaching. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Right now, what I would suggest then is stop whatever you're doing and refocus your mind on the present moment. Welcome everyone to episode number 51 of the Fitness Compass Podcast, the official podcast of thefitnesscompass.org, where we hope to inspire, educate, and guide people towards a healthier tomorrow. I'm Rick Kilmeyer with my other co-host, Chuck Hewitt. I'm, I'm consistent, right? Yeah, you are. So 51 is prime, and <laughs> this is a prime interview that we have. I, it always catches me off guard. With uh, Chris Shea, but we'll talk about him soon. Oh, man. First things first, can we do the review? I guess so. All right, review of the week. Brilliant. That's it. Five Ooh. stars. These guys have an incredible amount of passion and talent. The level of care and effort they put into their clients is nothing short of amazing. Love these guys. Mm. Thank you, Isaiah Vota. Do I love you too, Isaiah Vota? Fact. Yeah, solid guy. (laughs) Sweet. Um, And besides that, we got announcements, Chuck. This is a big week. We have a lot of things going on this week. I don't know (sighs) if they're ready. I don't know if they're ready. (laughs) So this week, we have a few things. We'll start off with the big stuff. This week, we are hiring on five new coaches. Five. Five. Count them. One, two, three, four, five. There's also five Also prime. <laughs> I'm so done with you right now. Five coaches, prime coaches, um, all very, very qualified, very um, wonderful human beings who care about the healthcare profession um, and making the world a healthier and happier place. Mm-hmm. Sincerely. Um, and... With these new five coaches, we have a new promo going on. If you do one-on-one training with any of them, you can buy one month and get the second month half off. So Say that one more time. You buy one month, Chuck, second month, 50% off. Holy smokes. Holy smokeronies. That is a lot of percentages off. Yes. <laughs> so we get, um, so if you go to www.thefitnesscompass.org slash store, you can go purchase the buy one, get one month, half off. Right now, start training with our coaches. Start your journey to a healthier, better tomorrow. Mm-hmm. ASAP Rocky. Other thing we got going on, we have... Um, patreon month still going on yep uh to celebrate all of our patrons we have a lot of goodies right now and gifts you can get at patreon.com if you support at patreon.com slash the fitness compass you do that um you'll be receiving a gift that is twice in value of what you are um pledging so if you pledge one dollar to us you get stickers if you pledge five dollars you get a cool mug if you get ten dollars you get a t-shirt at fifteen dollars you get a hoodie and at fifty dollars you get one-on-one training so that's a third of the normal price actually for yeah. the training. Mm-hmm. So if you want to get in those things for free or like a ridiculously cheap price instead of buying at the store, go to patreon.com, pledge us those, that months and you get a sweet gift. Yeah. It's pretty, if pretty you're into saving money. Check it out. Yeah. Well, speaking of that though, of stickers that will be in the store as we're recording this right now. So if you want to go get some sweet stickers for only a dollar 50, go to patreon.com or get a pack of four or yeah, all, yeah. all four, four, four dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. Yeah. You're right. Five dollars. Um, at tfc.com, thefitnesscompass.org. <laughs> what am I saying? TFC? I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm a mess. There's a lot of information I'm trying to give out right now. Um, so those are all the things. Um, they'll all be linked below in the description. And anything else that we are missing? For Click on it. Check it out. If you feel led, help us out, please. Cool. Uh, Chris Shea. We just interviewed him. He's yes. uh, on the East Coast in Maryland, mm-hmm. and he's changing lives and. Basically, I want to be like him when I grow up (laughs) because everything he's passionate about, uh, I am too. Yeah, developing people and whatnot. Yeah, hit us with his credentials. Okay, it's just going to be a a mouthful, but here we go. I'll I'll try my best. (laughs) All right, so Chris Shea founded Life Journey based out of Maryland where he does life coaching, in-person, and online counseling and business consulting. He also has published work in uh, medical and academic articles, author of two books. Chuck and I read one of them, pretty super solid. Pretty super solid. What's wrong with my words today? Um, he is a nationally and state certified um, addiction counselor and the director of campus ministries at a local high school and a professor of family studies and community de- development at Towson, 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 Towson University in Maryland. Yeah. So he's doing a lot. And he's busy. <laughs> he's busy. And he believes in work life balance. Yes. And that's the interesting thing. So, like during the entire interview, we, he talks about. Pretty much the main thing is finding inner peace through mindfulness in whatever season of life you're going through. Yeah. And as a busy man who is very peaceful, I would say, you, and we can, you'll hear it in his voice and his composure during the interview, yeah. is just 
he's an individual who's doing so much yet can find that balance and joy in the midst of whatever he's going through in life mm-hmm. and then he teaches you how to do the same yeah basically we got a free life coaching uh, <laughs> session so uh hope you guys enjoy yeah so welcome chris Shay to the podcast hey chris hey it's great to be here thank you for having me yeah, definitely. I'm um, just we're happy to have you on the show and thank you for making the time despite, you know, miles separating us. It's good to have you on. Yeah. <laughs> Are you still there, Chris? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Unfortunately, uh, I had a call coming in. Oh. Uh, <laughs> He's a busy man. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're good. We're good. We're keeping it rolling. We'll just go. We we'll just go with it. Um, okay, so um yeah, Chris, so if you could tell our listeners, um, what is it that you do? Like, what is Life Journeys blog all about? Because that is like the company you own, correct? Right. Yeah. And uh, really what I do is life coaching. Uh, I have in-office sessions, online sessions, and I do a lot of writing and publishing. My whole focus is on how do we find our inner peace? What do we need to do to... You know, live out a, a daily life filled with peace, um, and that's what I focus everything that I do around. Awesome. I mean, so a big thing that you always mention within your writings, within your, um, we've read one of your books and went through your blog, oh, and uh, a big thing that you always bring up and mention is mindfulness. Could you explain that? Sure. Mindfulness, and that it's been around for centuries, and you know, but the, it seems to be the new buzzword. But for me, mindfulness is all about staying focused in the present moment, non judgmentally. So it's all about focusing our thoughts and our attention on what's happening now. We can't go back to our past. Mm-hmm. We can learn from our past. We can't go back there and fix it. So don't dwell there. Yeah. And we have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. So if we stay focused on the present, we can reduce our stress and anxiety. We can also begin to make some plans, but it's going to help us get into more of an inner peace uh, mode because we are focused in the here and now. And the non-judgmentally is we're just going to feel and experience what's happening without placing a judgment. We're not going to say it's good, bad, or otherwise, Mm -hmm. because it is. Whatever we're feeling or whatever we're dealing with just is. So feel it, cope with it, and then we move on. Wow. Yeah. That's a, it's something that I've been thinking about recently quite a bit is, um, you know, within athletic endeavors or within, uh, your business or within relationships, there's so many, uh, ebbs and flows. There's high highs and low lows. And, um, there's people who really experience the highs and really experience the lows. And then you have others who just, it, it doesn't seem like they feel at all. And they're just pretty like even keel and, and forward. And, um, I'm just wondering, like, you know, with with your approach, um, how can you experience the highs and experience the lows and be, uh, you know, present, but then also be objective and being able to have like a a, a bigger perspective to see the bigger picture um, about everything that's going on, if that makes sense. Oh, it, it makes perfect sense because actually, the more that you practice the mindfulness the more objective you actually become. Hmm. We tend to lose that perspective and objectivity when we get way too emotionally involved and we're focusing our, our minds and thoughts on everything but the present. You know, so if you think about, you know, thinking of well, what's going to happen tomorrow or, or, or where's my business going or what if this and what if that, that's going to bring on so many emotions that, we're not going to be able to deal with with that. But if I look at this moment and say, all right, this is what I'm feeling right now. This is what I'm going through right now. What have I learned when things like this have happened before? Mm -hmm. And pull up some of that objective learning. um, And then we can place it into whatever is, you know, happening in our life. So, you know, if somebody were to say to you, all right, you know, look, you know, we, we need this good business plan. Um, or if I'm talking with somebody life coaching, you know, they want to come up with a life plan. Yeah. 
you know, it's kind of the same thing where it's, well, we're not going to dwell on all the what ifs. What has happened before? Or what have you learned from it? And what do you feel right now? And, and what is right now teaching you and telling you? Mm-hmm. And then we can more objectively make plans for what we can plan for and then be open to any changes that might occur or things that are just out of our control. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it's kind of like the mentality that um, we always talk with our clients. It's the mentality of, you know, what are you doing today to be the best you today? You know, forget yesterday and forget about tomorrow. But like, mm-hmm. what right now, right in this moment, what are you doing to improve yourself? What are you doing to work towards your goals rather than staying stagnant or taking steps backwards? Um, yeah, and and that's what you know. I try to work with my clients on is. You know, this is all about taking action, but we really do need to know more about ourselves and we can learn about ourselves through this this present moment and any life lessons, you know, that, that we've acquired. Yeah. And it's the whole idea of like control what you can control right. and, and focus on that. So I, I love that. That's good, Chris. Um, so, I mean, you are uh, an individual who has many traits. Many, many traits. It's, you know, you're, you're doing some counseling. You do life coaching. Um, you've worked with individuals with addiction. Mm-hmm. Um, and you also do some teaching as well. And you do writing. Mm-hmm. Um, I yes. guess what – I mean, there's so many questions that I have. But um, what do you think is your expertise in, in those different hats? And and it might be like permeate all those different um, jobs or aspects that you're involved in. But what do you think your expertise is within all of it? That that's a, a good one, and and I would say right now off the top of my head, what what really pops up for me would be the life coaching piece, mm. because most of what I'm writing about, and even in my counseling. I'm using many of the same techniques and the same messaging. So whether you're going to see me for some depression issues, you're going to see me for life guidance, it's still going to be talking about a lot of the mindfulness and whether I'm just adding some more clinical aspects to the mindfulness or not. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's, that, that, that's a good thought-provoking uh Reflection. I, I might have to work on that right. a little bit later. Yeah. So you, you, your expertise is life. I love yeah, it. I like it's it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> well, let, let's. Uh, that makes it sound a little too grand. But no. uh, <laughs> hey, we believe in yeah, you, Chris. You're, you're a grand guy, Chris. Um, <laughs> so in the in regarding that, so like you are doing so many different things. You're wearing so many hats, and you're helping so many individuals. For yourself personally, how do you find mindfulness? What are routines that you have? What are practices that you do um, regarding meditation, maybe, maybe like a weekly uh, uh, event that you attend, whatever it may be. Like, what are some things that you implement into your everyday life and like your weekly schedule to help you stay mindful and self-aware? And, and that is important because in my story, that wasn't always the case. And I lived in a, a very um, type A personality. I, I was doing a corporate world. I, I really didn't live any of that. So what I've learned uh, through my practices with mindfulness is it's so important to take time for yourself. And, and if you don't take time for yourself, everything else is going to fall apart eventually. So for me, um, it is the regular routine of meditation. And what I mean in, in and that is really just quiet time to reflect on myself, on what's going on around me. Um, I also, you know, take time every day just to really either do nothing or whatever fun thing I like to do. You know, like read a, a nonsense type book or, you know, watch a, a sitcom. Um, you know, something that can just really not involve a whole lot of thought or emotion right. um but that can you know help to recharge and uh mm. and and i would also say you know don't get into this focus that if i'm not doing anything yeah. then i'm wasting my time mm-hmm. you know because what i've had to learn through the hard way but really had to learn that that our bodies are going to tell us what we need and there are times within a week when you know, my body just tells me at, at some point in the day, you're done. 
You know, like it, it didn't matter what else you wanted to do or what was going on. You're done. Right. Um, and not to feel guilty about it, you know, but that's just where you are. And, and if you listen to it, then come the next day, you're going to be much more, you know, productive and effective because you actually were in tune with your body and listened to what it was telling you. Yeah, right. But like for both myself and Ricky, we're <laughs> we're living in Los Angeles, and it's yeah. do more, be more, mm-hmm. um, go, go, right. go, and uh, and it's like that's that's stuff that we we preach and we tr- we try to practice. Right. But um, I'll speak for myself. Like it is hard for me to just be still and not do anything and not feel guilty. Like uh, right. even you know taking a nap in the middle of the day i'm like my body needs it but then i go in this spiral of like dang i'm not being productive um i could have used that time more wisely um how would you recommend kind of uh counteracting those thoughts like immediately yeah we've all been there and i I think it, it really just comes down to that you've got to remind yourself that without self care what good are you you know, and, you know, sure, you could say, well, I would be more productive if I didn't take that nap. But would you really, you know, yeah. in, in thinking about, so if you work through that nap, were you at your best ability? Or maybe an hour or so later, whatever that task was, were you at your best ability mm-hmm. because you didn't take the time to rest? You know, so maybe it isn't for the best. I think one of the things that really helped me to come to this understanding. And uh, I wrote a reflection on, on my webpage about this not too long ago. But, you know, when, when we fly, it would always bother me when the flight attendant would give the instructions uh, on safety and they would say, when the airbags drop, uh, put your mask on first and then help, you know, any young children or people who need help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that always bothered me. As a father, it was like, there is no way I'm going to make myself comfortable while my kid's gasping for air. Yeah. But it dawned on me at, at one point that that actually makes sense. Mm-hmm. Because you're going to have a kid who's struggling out of fear and then struggling if they can't breathe. And as you're trying to get a mask on a struggling kid, which is going to be nearly impossible, you might pass out in the meantime. Right. Yeah. Then what good are you? Right. You know, so I, I began to see that wisdom. If I put mine on first, I have as much time as I need to get that mask on my kid because I'm breathing the air. Mm. So yeah. I can take my time. I can do what I need to do because I don't have to be stressed. You know, oh, if I don't get this on quick, I'm going to have a problem. No, I'm yeah. already set. So taking care of oneself is really vital to helping anybody else around us. Mm-hmm. Dang, yeah. No, I mean, at the end of the day, as, like, healthcare professionals, like, you know, if you're not taking care of yourself, how do you expect to help anyone else? And it's almost like, you know, if you're going, going, going 24-7 um, and not taking the time to rest or pour into yourself and you're just giving, 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 you know, your cup only has so much. And if you're trying exactly. to pour pour into other people's lives and not pour, you're filling yourself up, your cup's going to run dry sooner or later. And, you know, I think that's just the biggest... <laughs> I think at the end of the day is like something that we always have to remind ourselves as, you know, business owners and um, as coaches, like we can, there's always going to be more to do and someone else to help and this like never ending cycle of to do, you know, to do's and we just realize sometimes like, hey, if I want, I can either work 12 hours straight and be exhausted by the end of the day or take a nap in the middle of the day. And just absolutely crush four hours of work and get the exact same amount of work I get done within those twelve hours of just being like exhausted. Um, exactly. Yeah. Well, and then think about you know all the different cultures and countries around the world that take the afternoon siesta. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's true. You know, I mean, it's worked for them for however long they've been doing it. So maybe there's some wisdom in this that you know we in the Western world, for whatever reason, just don't see that. But um, I, I really think to help, uh, you know, our own mental health and, and our own stresses and anxieties, we do need to reframe that notion that I'm not productive if I'm not doing. Yeah. Right. And, and to me, that that is more of a modern thing. You know, when you think back to 17, 1800s and, 
you know, people used to sit around on the porch and just talk. Yeah. You know, and, and they didn't think they were being unproductive. <laughs> right. right. I think they did. They kept doing it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the whole idea that, like, you know, we can look at, you know, what you're saying, like, you know, reading a fun book or watching a sitcom. It can be, it would, it's deemed by soci- social standards as unproductive and it's lazy, you know, quote unquote lazy. Right. But what, in reality, what you're doing is you're being productive and filling yourself up. You're being productive in, being a human, you know, interacting with people that you care, you want to interact with, yeah. and you know, um, being productive in a self care manner. Right, and and it's very important also for people like us who are in the field where we're trying to help others. We're usually the hardest ones to convince that we need self care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, another thing that I wanted to touch on, you know, just reading about kind of like why, how you started life's journey was back in 2012 when you found yourself without a job, but you used to, um, work, work, work. And, um, you know, that just made me think about like work life balance. And this is kind of on the topic that we're on right now. Um, do you think it is like, is there an actual balance between work and life? And if so, how do you apply it or how can it be applied? I definitely believe that there is, uh, but it does go back to what we've been saying that, you know, right now culture and society says, you know, the one who stays at the office longer is going to get the promotions and look better than the one who doesn't. But, you know, in reality, when we look at, you know, whatever we're doing, you know, when I was doing, you know, purely mental health counseling and the addiction work, we always talked about, you know, how do you balance your day? So when I'm dealing with someone you know, who is new in recovery and really struggling with their addiction and always was, well, how is your day balanced? Because in the act of addiction, it wasn't, you know, and, and I'm sure, you know, when people are doing different exercises and workouts and, you know, you want to balance what muscle groups and what you're doing, you, you don't want to just focus on one thing. Yeah. So we, we seem to get it, but then when it comes to work and family, we throw that out the window. Mm. So... I think it, it still applies there. You know, the work is always going to be there. Right. But, you know, sometimes our, our family is, is more important in that sense that will they always be there? Right. So, you know, we really need to refocus that. And, you know, that is the thing that I, I learned for myself. And, you know, what I'm now doing, even though I have all this stuff that I do, yeah. <laughs> I make sure... <laughs> <laughs> it, it, sometimes I do wonder, <laughs> right, right. but even though in, in all that I'm doing, I still make sure that it's family first, you know, like even this past Saturday, I never opened up my laptop or, or phone or whatever, because it was all family time all day, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, so even though I kind of played catch up later, but that was still important, you know, so I think it's just like with the napping and, and, you know, taking time for self. It's just got to be, we have to make a conscious effort uh, to make the family time important because you don't always have, or at least we're not always guaranteed that family, but we're pretty guaranteed that whatever our job is, is always going to be around. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And, and so going off of that, um, what, for those who are listening to this, what are some things that, individuals can apply right now like if you're listening to this and you're like man i love all this i love like you know what chris is talking about i want to live that kind of life that balance and that mindfulness and that self-awareness but i just don't know where to start i don't know how to even like get there what are some things they can do like right now to get to this place of mindfulness so right now what i would suggest then is stop whatever you're doing and refocus your mind on the present moment we have to consciously do that. You know, it, it'll eventually become second nature. But at the beginning, consciously do that. Just do that for 10 minutes. Five of 10 is too long. But just <laughs> refocus your mind. Oh, we can start with two minutes of that. You know? yeah, yeah. But whatever it is, to just refocus your mind on that. Mm. And then once you kind of do that a few times, I would say, you know, sit down and start to make a list. You know, what is important to me in my life? Mm -hmm. And what is kind of nice, but 
you know, we, we could maybe forego that if we had to. Because what I'm thinking is, what do we need to do to rebalance our life? So if we start to make those lists and figure out what's essential, what could kind of come and go, and restructure my daily schedule, I know you're going to find that you have time for yourself, for family, for meditating, right. uh, you know, for some reading about mindfulness and refocusing yourself. But really that biggest thing is start right this second and putting your thoughts and your mind on the present moment. Because uh, until you learn how to do that, the rest of the stuff really isn't going to make sense. Right. And is this still also applicable um, when individuals are going through the midst of uh, severe life ad- adversity or obstacles, whether it be you know getting fired from a job or a loss of a loved one or some sort of traumatic event? Um, can they still use these like these the same uh, steps to find inner peace in the midst of it all, or is there more that they have to do? That's definitely the start. You know that. When adversity hits, you know, one of the things that we start to do is, is panic about it, and the panic really is, again, thinking into the future. You know, so what am I going to do now? What's going to happen? What's What we need to do is, is, as much as possible, be still in the moment. And, you know, at least go through the feelings that you're going through. You know, I, I think for people who are going through grief, one of the issues is they skip over a lot of those feelings of, of the grief because they're moving so fast. Yeah. We've got to slow ourselves down and feel what you're feeling, and it, it's okay to feel what you're feeling, acknowledge it, and then what's the next feeling and what's the next? And what you're doing is just living in the next moment. Mm-hmm. And wherever that's taking you is where that's taking you. And then... You know, further down the road in adversity, you know, I think the important thing is action. You know, what action steps can we take uh, either to help ourselves in that situation or to help other people? But staying secluded in that adversity and continuing to say that I'm helpless isn't going to help move you forward and help you to find the peace. What's going to do that is what action do I need? You know, so if I got fired or my job got cut, whatever it might be, my fault, not my fault, go through your feelings and emotions, but then start taking action. What's your next right step to do to move yourself forward? Yeah. Dang. That's really good. (laughs) Power. Yeah. Um, for my, for myself, Chris, I, uh, I like to live by slogans, and <laughs> when I find myself, uh, you know, stressed out or anxious or overwhelmed, like I just have, I try to do positive self-talk. A lot of that. Um, I'm also intrigued by performance psychology and everything. But um, I was just wondering, you know, as as yourself as a life coach and counselor, um, and just like a developer of people. Uh, for yourself, do you live by a slogan? Are there like, is there like a one liner that you remind yourself of when you're feel, feeling overwhelmed with all um, the jobs that you are that you have your hand in, um, or is that not something that you really practice? No, I, I actually do. I mean, I have a whole ton of quotes in there, but the two that really I try to live by and, and teach others, um, the one, and I don't know where to attribute it to, but it's not me. So I'm not taking credit for it, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the quote is: "There are no problems, only solutions." Mm. And I don't know where it came from, but I love it yeah, because yeah. that's the empowerment that that gives me that power and control to say, you know, whatever is happening around me, I can always find a solution. There, there's got to be a way out, and yeah. that's what we need to keep looking. Even if you get creative. That there's got to be a way, and, and there are our only solutions in life. And then the other quote that I really like is, um, it's been attributed to many people. Um, I use it as the attribution to the Talmud uh, that says, um, we don't see the world as it is, we see the world as we are. Hmm. So it's kind of one of those things that how I feel on the inside 
is how I view the world around me. Yeah. So if you think that the world around you is falling apart, take a look inside because there might be stuff inside that you're not liking either. And if you can work on those things, you're going to start to see the world different. You know, if you're living a life filled with inner peace, the world, and, and not in some Pollyanna way, but the world is going to look brighter because you're going to recognize that, hey, it could be falling apart in reality, mm-hmm. but I know there's solutions and I know I'm at peace and I know we can figure something out. And you're going to look at the world from a whole different perspective. Yeah. Dang. Dang, I'm not one for philosophy, but that was that pretty was fire. Yeah, that was fire. <laughs> Uh, what well, one of my degrees is in philosophy, sorry. No, Perfect. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would take classes from you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, sign, sign me up as well. Um, well, Chris, I, we're going to be wrapping this up soon. I, first of all, I can't thank you enough for, you know, just the amount of wisdom you've been pouring into. Not only us, I feel like this has can been like a, kind of like a lecture for our own business, our, our own lives. A our life own... coaching session. Yeah. <laughs> we got a free life <laughs> coaching there session for you. Go. So we definitely appreciate that and everything you've been giving us, but also to our listeners. Um, but before we uh, ask, we wrap it up and ask our final question. Is there anything that we can like you can plug for us? Like, how can we reach out to you? Like, I know there's probably tons of people who are listening to this who would love to work alongside you. Um, so how would they reach you? And then what other products that you have that um, can benefit them? Uh, really, the best way to reach me is to go over to my website. And that's lifesjourneyblog.com. Uh, you go over there and you're going to find all of my uh, services, all of the things that I offer, all of my contact information, social media information. Uh, the thing that I, I would plug right now is the second book in my motivational guidance series um, has just hit um, Amazon and Google Play and iBooks and all of those places. So, but you can click through my website to get to uh, the Amazon or the Google Play or wherever you want to uh, purchase it. Um, and then I also have a podcast called On Finding Peace. And uh, again, that's on the website. You can click through there to you know, look at all the episodes and you know see what's coming up and, and all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, definitely my website. Anybody who wants to collaborate or, or work with me, same thing it's life's journey blog.com sweet yeah I'll definitely have that link in the description below for this podcast um awesome. so now chris is our favorite part of the podcast where we get to affirm you for a little bit <laughs> um and chris i mean we've uh, been in contact for a little bit for the past few weeks trying to get this uh get our you know this interview going like to actually happen and so glad it, like finally got to, to um come to reality and I mean, the biggest thing I can just say for you or about you is just, dude, what a big heart. <laughs> you know, you're just an individual I can just tell that radiates who went through um, a significant change in your own life. You were saying like in 2012, like this revelation hits you and it's coming from a place of, you know, distraction and uh, turmoil within your own heart and with your own mind and finding a way and finding a inner peace for yourself and you're like man this is so great and i need to share this with everyone else i cannot just keep this um sense of uh reality that i found to myself um and yeah the biggest thing is just like at the end of the day is like you i think i mean the thing that just keeps coming to my mind is like a man who cares but someone who's like so, you use your i think the, the coolest thing too is like i'm talking to you and it's, it's come from a place of like such humility and such um because you're just filled with so much knowledge and so much experience and yet you're just so easy to talk to and you're so practical and you're so uh, easygoing and so relatable and it's easy for me to really pick up on uh, what you are teaching me and teaching us. Yeah. Um, so I, I can't thank you enough for everything that you're doing. Um, thank you for the time that you spent with us. And yeah. Now now it's my turn. Um, oh. <laughs> Chris, yeah, it's just been... Um, you know, just thank you for for making the time and uh, being flexible with the East Coast timing to to be on our podcast and be our guest and bring more value to um, our product of the podcast. Um, and it's just so cool to uh, talk to others who have had more experience and have more knowledge in this area of uh, inner peace and self awareness um, and mindfulness. Uh, so just for 
giving us the opportunity to ask you questions and, and pick your brain is, is really cool. And uh, to encourage you that um, you are living a purposeful life um, and really having an impact on, on individuals and, and making a change uh, one individual at a time, but that's going to change... Uh, you know, families, that's going to change the communities that these people are in. So, um, you know, keep, stay encouraged, keep the faith, and um, just keep plugging away at everything you're doing. Yeah. Well, I, I really appreciate those affirmations, and I really believe in that domino effect. You know, you, you change one person, and it just dominoes from there. So, you know, if we can just keep it at, at one, if all of us can, you know, change at least one person's life. Uh, the world is going to be so much better than it is right now. Um, but I really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, you, know, you guys have been awesome. It's great talking with you guys. Um, and, yeah, I just love sharing this. It, it's, you know, something that everyone can get on board with. It's something we can all do. So as much as I can share it, I, I just want to get out there and share it. I love yeah. it. That's awesome. So, Chris, our final question we have for you. We asked all of our guests on our podcast. What is your definition of health? My definition of health is when a person, and I look at this holistically, uh, when a person is being true to themselves. In, in other words, physically, emotionally, mentally, are you doing the best that you can do for who you are at this moment? And, and to me, that's being true to oneself. And if you're doing all of that, then you have health. Dang. Well, that was good. <laughs> good. Mic drop on that. That's yeah. awesome. Oh. <laughs> too short, too long. <laughs> no, it was perfect. Oh, that was great. It was perfect. Um, every, that's the thing we love about it. We always ask our guests this because every single individual has a different answer. And at the end of the day, I think there's truth in all of it. You know, it's just like it's all like the big, oh, yeah. bigger holistic picture. And I love that. Um, so, yeah, Chris, uh, thank you. I thank you again for being on the show. Uh, we definitely will be keeping in touch and, you know, just we're happy to be on the same team, say at least. Happy yeah. to be on the same team helping yep. people. Same here. Yep. <laughs> well, there's so many people to help and, and is, you know, glad that a lot of people are out there doing it. <laughs> All right, Chris. Well, take it easy and until next time. Yeah, we appreciate you. Adios. Wonderful. Welcome, everyone, back to the Ricky and Chuck exclusive edition of the podcast. Chuck, I feel like a brand new man. Yeah. An enlightened and peaceful man. I need to just go lay on that couch yeah. you know, and forget be this, mindful and aware. Yeah, forget this podcast. You know, yeah. for the rest of this podcast, we're going to have 10 minutes of silence. Oh, man. And we're going to just meditate together. No, I'm just kidding. Yes. We have a lot to talk about. We have a beautiful meet that we just wrapped up, which means we need a beautiful bun. Yeah, question of the week. Question of the week. Comes from uh, my roommate, Sean Bexter. The Bexter. It's actually Sean Beck, but we call him the Bexter. <laughs> or um, Ricky, Ricky calls him the Bexter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, I mentioned to him one day when Ricky and I were, were uh, working mm -hmm. um, on TFC stuff, naturally. Naturally. I was like, Sean, I miss seeing you doing your morning workouts. Like, that was always, like, inspirational, <laughs> and, and you really motivated me to, like, dang, I need to be living out, you know, practicing what I preach. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, but I've been having, like, this uh, this wrist problem. Like, what's going on? He's like, yeah, whenever I do push-ups, just I'm getting this pain in my wrist. I was like, all right, easy fix. Grab those dumbbells that we have, um, grip those, and place them about shoulder width apart, and do uh, push-ups that way. And... Um, you know, for him, it took off all the all the pressure that was aggravating his wrist, um, right. and now he can continue to do push ups in his workout. Yeah. Uh, so it's just quick, easy fixes. There's always ways to uh, going back to our uh, interview with Chris Shea. Mm -hmm. There's always a solution. So yeah, there's very, not problems. There's just solutions right. in this world. Absolutely, and they're all very. And it's, with this again, it's like it's a very practical approach. So we just have mm -hmm. to take a stop, you know, a moment to step back and look at the solutions, look at the options that we have. Yeah, and it, it's so much fun. It's it's always solving problems, right? Yeah, and uh, we really enjoy, you know, those those simple questions of like, hey, I really enjoy this type of workout, but I'm getting this pain. Like, what do you suggest? Right. You know, as simple as doing doing pushups. And one thing I always tell people why we I personally like love, and I'm sure you can, you know, uh, back this up reason I love doing personal training and like life coaching and rehab, whatever it may be, is that each human body is a puzzle mm -hmm. and you just got to figure out like problem solve and like 
um, get like, here's the facts. Here's like what we know about this particular individual. This is what they want to do. How do we get them there? Yeah. What obstacles do we have to overcome and what solutions can we make for those obstacles? And so for this situation is, hey, my wrists are sore when I'm in a push-up position. It's like, well, you're putting a lot of weight bearing down on top of your yeah. tendons and ligaments and muscles. Then it's creating a lot of um, excessive like extension on the wrist. So to reduce extension on the wrist, boop, lock it up through yep. holding dumbbells. Mm-hmm. No more pain. Yep. And it takes you know, it's like five-second fix. And then yeah. you know, I can do push-ups that again. That translates into doing like mountain climbers or planks. And- right. Uh, anything from that position Mm -hmm. no definitely um so yeah um lesson moral of the story sean just keep doing push-ups and always ask questions always ask questions no no such thing as a bad question or dumb question yeah just dumb people ask questions (laughs) (laughs) i was waiting for it that's that's from my dad that's that's uh chuck senior's favorite uh famous quote um that i absolutely love Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you again, Chris Shea, um, for reaching out to us and being on the show. We had so much fun talking to you. And um, guys, if you want to be working alongside of him, he does do online counseling. Um, I highly recommend it. And life coaching. And life coaching, business consulting, whatever it may be that you are desiring. Um, he has that pretty much. He's a man of many resources. Go check him out. Please check out his website. Read Life's, his books. Read his books. We read it. It's solid. Go to Life's um life's journey blog.com and all his resources there um if you want to be supporting us on patreon and want to check us out our stuff and our resources go to the fitness compass.org yeah and there you'll find our podcast you'll find personal training you'll find uh tfc journey groups where it's like a two-month class where we pretty much guide you through a healthier tomorrow we got apparel um, apparel we got stickers stickers mugs in the future um go to itunes.com and leave a review yeah and be a review of the month and besides that i think we're good yep i hope we're good are you good we chuck are. i'm great okay i'm gonna go be mindful okay <laughs> bye guys Peace. thank you for listening to this episode with chris shea learn more about chris shea by visiting his website www.lifesjourneyblog.com <laughs>